one. Welcome back to Hoops HD, everybody. This is a very Ooh. special podcast with a very special guest. First of Thank all, I'm your you. host, Chad Sherwood, the puppet David Griggs and David Dorman with very. us. And our very special guest come to us from his car, Joe Lenardi from ESPN and St. Joe's University. Oh, oh he's the special guest. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. How are you? <laughs> well, I'd like to say I'm driving someplace, you know, legendary, like, I don't know, the Palestra or, uh, you know, someplace legend to the Philadelphia Big Five or somebody's practice or workout. But I'm, I'm actually halfway into Center City to... Uh, <laughs> to pick up my daughter, meet her at a mega bus from Manhattan. And <laughs> the only way I could make, of course, that was kind of dropped on me at the last minute as parenting tends to be. And uh, the only way I could make it work was to drive halfway, pull over and talk to you guys. And when the time comes and I get a text, tell you guys to shut up and then yeah. keep going. <laughs> Well, if you uh, want to keep Joe, going to her, that we'll, we'll take the video of you driving the rest of the way. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I, I, Joe, I, I am twice as excited as I was five minutes ago. I didn't realize you were coming to us from your car. I can't tell you how on brand that is for what we do. <laughs> I, I can't yeah, drive. I, mean, I don't have any arms. But I can see certainly, you know, I'm only the second oddest looking person <laughs> on the screen. Yeah, I always did think Chad was odd looking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a gimme. Uh, lay up. Uh, uh, but uh, Joe, I just wanted to, you know, everyone, we all see you in, uh, in February and March, especially on, on ESPN in the Locked in the Bracket Bunker, among other things, uh, uh, with, and, and of course on the website. But uh, I don't know that many people he hear as much about your about your background and stuff. I, I just want to give you a few seconds here, kind of like fill people in how you became the bracketologist. <laughs> well, let's take it from the top. Um, you know, I was born at a very young age, uh, <laughs> very close to my mother, yeah. and uh, it just snowballed from there. Uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> so. I think the easiest way to probably describe it, since we've we've kind of done the connection to Philly piece already, is, you know, I went to one of the Philadelphia Big Five schools, St. Joe's, and as an undergrad, you know, I'm so old that the the Big Five schools, you know, Villanova, Penn, Temple, St. Joe's, and LaSalle we're all still playing in the same building, which is, of course, the famed palestra at the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. And, you know, being a, a cub reporter for, for the St. Joe's school paper entitled me, you know, I got a little card not only to, to do the St. Joe's games, but it got you into all the big five games. And the games were typically in double headers. So, you know, like a Saturday night could be like an Ivy League, like, you know, Penn, Harvard, and then St. Joe's Villanova, or, or it could be two out-of-town teams. Like, I remember one time a doubleheader was uh, St. Joe's DePaul, Villanova, Notre Dame. Like, wow. that's pretty cool. Yes. That's cool. You know, that wouldn't <laughs> happen now. But, you know, the teams that came in, like, I've seen Kansas at the Palestra. I've seen UCLA at the Palestra. I've seen Duke and Carolina at the Palestra. So if you grew up when I did and you liked college basketball, it was almost like I majored in college basketball without knowing that that's what was happening. Because, you know, most of the things that I pursued professionally we're, we're more connected to my, oop, there's the, to my extracurricular activities in, in college than my classroom curricular activities. And, you know, I don't want to paint the wrong picture. Like I was a good student and, and, you know, I was a public admin major and I'm supposed to be working for the government. And, and, you know, I took it seriously and all that, but, you know, what's happened in the, 40 years since is as much if not more of my professional life 
has connected back to my, you know, undergraduate days on press row than, than anything else. And, and bracketology is, is simply an outgrowth of that in the sense that, you know, I kind of fell in love with how the tournament is put together, which is different from falling in love with the tournament. Right. (laughs) I mean, most people have the former and maybe not the latter, you know, they, they love it, but you know, they turn it on when it starts and they turn it off after one shining moment and that's all great. Uh, But my interest is obviously deeper than that. And it started when I was an undergrad and we St. Joe's, you know, my, my junior year got in the tournament and had one of those magical runs, you know, to the elite eight beat the number one team in the country along the way. And, and, was and DePaul, it was, was that a DePaul pretty galvanizing. Arena? What's that? Was that DePaul at UD arena? It was in fact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on, the old, on the old tartan rubber floor. Yeah. No. And just as a, as a side, this past uh, February, I go out to Chicago to participate in, in a movie premiere about the Loyola Chicago 63 championship team, uh, a game of change. You know, they, they, they started uh, four black players, which was unheard of. Mm-hmm. Mississippi State wouldn't play them, blah, 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 things that would never happen today. But a, a film was made about it, and I'm at the premiere with some friends I made over the years at Loyola, including, God bless her, the now 103-year-old sister Jean, Wow. We're tight. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I firmly believe you do not mess with the Lord during brackets. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, I was with David the night before, I think this event. Uh, and we went to a riveting tilt between the Hoyts <laughs> and the Blue Demons. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure you've seen the clips because whenever you click on the Hall of Fame website, they come right up. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, you know, green room or whatever at this event and I get introduced to a guy and it turned, it was Mark Aguirre. Really? Who wow. of course was the star of that. Depo- and, you know, I don't, this is terrible to say he's showing his age a little more than I am. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we're like the same age. Yeah. Or at least the same years in school. And I said, Mark, I said, I'm honored to, to meet you. I said, but the last time I saw you in person, you were walking out the back of UD Arena and you threw a basketball into the Miami River. And he goes, oh, my God, no, not St. Joe's. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. He said, do you know how, you know, I've met 800,000 people who said they were at that game. And I said, well, I really was. <laughs> and I was sitting on the baseline where the winning shot was made. And it was, you know, one of those, if, if it happened today, it would be part of the loop that yeah. you see whenever the tournament, you know, come, comes on the air. So that was where my kind of fixation with the tournament began. You know, I'm thinking like my questions were like, how did we in that game? We St. Joe's like, why weren't we in the East region? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, how did we get like in those that it was only uh, 48 teams that year and for another handful after that. So, you know, the one through four in each region got a buy. So when we played DePaul, they had been sitting around for a week. And and, you know, a lot of the coaches of those teams didn't like that. Right. And DePaul, as it turns out, they, they lost in the first round in 80. To UCLA as the number one overall seed, and then the year after to St. Joe's. So yeah, you, you know they they would probably not like to have a buy if 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 they're ever that good again. But uh, you, you know, different time, different place, but great memories. And I just began kind of studying brackets then, like how did this happen that we were in that spot? And you know, here we are. 40 years later and 
somebody was kind enough to invent the internet so that you know my my little quirks could be viewed broadly and uh you know now i'm talking to you guys on a screen in my car so yeah <laughs> Clear life, highlight. Life, life, yeah. life is 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 unpredictable and good i i kind of want to get it, go in a direction i didn't think we would go but after hearing that story it sounds like you've kind of grown up with the tournament as the tournament has grown up and this is just something i've tried to circle when did it sort of become the spectacle that it is like was it 79 when the bird magic final which as an individual game destroyed the rankings i don't i, I don't think it still has been there's been a basketball game rated that high. Was it when CBS got it? Was it in 85 when it went to 64? I, I'm not, I, I have not, I was two um, when that happened. So I was not there and I don't remember it actually happening, but when did the tournament kind of become what we know it to be today, Joe, or was it an evolution or was there a moment to where it was like, wow, this is it. Yeah. I think, I think a handful of moments, David, and, and, and you've certainly nailed most of them. Uh, if, if I were to go a little bit further back, uh, I, would, I, I think that in, in a way, you know, you know, when you ask people about, like, wh what's the greatest college basketball game ever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, many, if not most, say the Leitner game. Yeah. And, and certainly – as a seminal moment when the tournament, you know, just like it had already exploded by then, but, you know, primetime CBS game again, happened to be in Philly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I happened to be there. So, you know, I, I'm not saying, what do they say? Causation and correlation are not the same. I'll let <laughs> doers decide. But, to the really old timers, if you ask them about the greatest game ever played, many talk about the 74 ACC championship game. Yes. I, I thought that was going to be what you pointed to was that one. Yeah. Which was not a tournament. State, yeah. It was not a tournament game, but what we know is it was, it turned out to be the last year that there were no at large teams. Yes. Because both of those teams were, you know, top four or five in the country. And, you know, a hundred and whatever it was, two to 101 and double, whatever it was, it was, you know, Tom McMillan, Monty Tao, David Thompson beating Tom McMillan, Len Elmore, and, you know, who, yeah. who, whomever from the Terps. And it was just finally viewed as, you know, borderline criminal that a team could be that good and not go to the tournament. Right. So, you know, the next year we had a few at large teams and it, in, and each year it started to grow and it only took until 76 where the final was Indiana, Michigan, mm -hmm. two big 10 teams. Uh, and that couldn't have happened even a year or two before. Right, yeah. Uh, and, 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 of course, that was the last unbeaten champion in, in, in Indiana, you know, Bobby Knight, perfect season, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, y y you know, look, the tournament was going to expand someday because the big boys, you know, while, while they tend to look nine times out of ten at, at football and not basketball, you know, they were leaving money on the table by not doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was a huge moment. I, I, I wouldn't, I, you know, I know the bird magic game got great ratings. Yeah. Uh, but, but I, I actually think that, you know, that, and, and I'm not shilling here, that being the year that ESPN was born. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, almost immediately started carrying the early rounds of the tournament, which never used to be on right. network yeah. TV or, or, or even, you know, like a lot of times it was tape delayed. 
Like, imagine that in this day and age. Like, here we are, you know, and I don't mean to speak ill of, you know, Queen Elizabeth died today, right? Right. Imagine, imagine if, like, somehow you did your whole work day and you didn't know and you came home and found out on tape delay. Yeah. Crazy. Like, that can't happen now. But Mm -hmm. it, it, and I'm not equating the British monarchy to the NCAA tournament, although some of us would much rather want to play yeah. another. Yes. But, but what I'm saying, like, it, it's the early rounds and the picking of the brackets that has made the tournament explode. Yeah. There'd be no fun or as much interest in picking, you know, UMBC in an early round or, or, you know, George Mason or sister Jean, right. If those early rounds weren't on, like if we were picking up the tournament, you know, already in progress, yeah. it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> no. It would, it, you know, it wouldn't, you know, I grew up watching Notre Dame football highlights on Sunday mornings delayed, you know, we go to further action in the third quarter already in progress. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Lindsey Nelson, after an exchange of punts, the mid, the midshipmen, <laughs> yeah, blah, blah, oh. blah, 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 blah. Like, it's uh, just consumed so differently now. Yeah. And, Joe, and uh, it has become that spectacle. Unbelievable. Joe, if I had the power to put you in charge of the tournament tomorrow, what's the first thing you would change, add, get rid of? What would Joe Lenardi do first? Uh, I think the, f- well, let David, it's really great. <laughs> okay, so, so like, I'm with you. I, I, I try I and catch some to, of it every year. <laughs> I would probably be getting a lot of pressure to not do anything. But any new executive at anything <laughs> has to do yeah. something, something, right? So I think I think the first, very first thing I would do would be uh, none of the automatic qualifiers would go to date. Okay. And play okay. in the first. Okay, you know, you 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 do. You, we can argue that Division One is too big. And that, you, you know, the too many of the one bid leagues have no chance, et cetera. But at this moment in time, the aggregate membership has given them standing in the championship event. And I think that being an automatic qualifier means you did what you were told to do or did what and, – and that should – that, that should get you something. Yeah. I'm not saying it should get you a five seed. If you're, you know, uh, Furman, I'm saying like those schools sh- should go in the main bracket well, and, and, and get the, the full experience. Yeah. And, and Joe, the what we say- would be what we would get then if, if we stayed at 68 is we'd have four games of bubble teams, oh. right? Yeah. Theoretically, the last eight in, right? Yeah, or the last eight on the seed Send. list that weren't AQs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As, Send as at large. So I would do that. Uh, the second thing I would do is uh, – I would have probably a slightly, you know, maybe a, a about half the size of a committee of really smart people. Really? Uh, mm. Well, I mean, it would be rude to do what I really want, which is to just, you know, have me do it. Well, <laughs> um, well, well Joe, I have suggested we've had David Warlock and we actually had Tom Burnett on last year. And right? I had suggested multiple times that I personally just take over the process 
and yeah. they have not moved on that. Are Griggs, he said smart people. He said oh. smart people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know they're very concerned about. I've been up all night thinking of this one. They're very concerned about any members of the committee being seen as puppets for certain leagues. Or <laughs> yeah, that, that's that, that's what they said. Uh, well played. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're all about cost containment, right? Uh, yeah. So why are we why are we taking a whole floor of the Marriott Marquis for a week? <laughs> and I would do it for a couple six packs and a pizza. Yeah, me too. And I throw in the <laughs> NIT, no extra charge. Because I've already got the seed list down that far. Like I've done their work for them. Yeah. And, and not just at the end. I've done it every day for five months. Yeah. Like I don't go to bed from Thanksgiving until March without a seed list that day. Mm -hmm. That like, like, I'm not suggesting that that's healthy behavior. <laughs> hey, we, humans, we behave the same way. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I, I believe, I believe that that's the best way to do my job. Yeah. And, and to be as thorough as possible. And, and so, so, so I would, I, I would streamline the process. Like I know why they do it the way they do it. Yeah. And I guess, you know, Joe, that basically throughout all three divisions for every team sport, anyway, committees mm -hmm. are about 95% the same as far as the makeup, as far as the process yes, of selecting. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but I doubt that there's, you know, a culture or community of, two or 300 people doing mocks of the field hockey bracket. No, there's not. Um, I just, fact, some, of last night. On, <laughs> some of the people that and get I on those committees. I ran across someone last fall who does project the field hockey bracket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and I only knew that because St. Joe's was, was in it and was getting it. Yeah. But the, the, you know, the reality is nobody pays attention to the other NCAA selection committees. For the most no part. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm excluding major college football because that's not an NCAA committee to begin with. It's not. Yeah. So we have the men's basketball committee. We have the women's basketball committee, which certainly gets its fair share of attention. Mm -hmm. Uh but there, there generally aren't like scathing columns in USA Today about snubs from the women's tournament. Not usually, no. Uh, so, so I, you know, I'd probably tweak selections a little bit. Uh, I'd have to, you know, we're getting to the point now where the conferences are so doggone big and getting bigger then I'm not sure the Lenardi rule as configured would, would still work. That being 500 minimum in your league games to be tournament eligible. I uh, would still be. I do think yeah. there should be tournament eligibility. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just not clear to me that that, that is the exact sweet spot now. Uh, so further study on that and, and I guess you know longer term I, I, I would look at you know maybe a small expansion of sorts really huh. maybe like 72 and we would have an eastern and a western or some kind of rotating we we replicate the first four in another part of the country Okay. The, the first, uh, well, yeah. One of the things and, I would and, and that, And if I got my first change in place, which is no AQs in yeah. the, in the opening rounds, then the first four really could be like bracket busters. Yeah. And we could stage it that way. We could take the last four or the last eight power fives and match them intentionally with, you know, Drake, and mm -hmm. and and make that a thing, right? Right. Like you can't 
tell me that people wouldn't like that. Oh, they would love it. Like the- more than they might like Texas Southern against Quinnipiac. Yeah. Yes. One thought I have, Joe, and, and I'll by just say, doing it yeah. regionally, we could maybe cut down on the travel between Sunday night and Tuesday night. Or that we was worth, just, yeah. We could, ditch, we could ditch the Sunday championship games. Yeah. And do the selection show at noon on Sunday. <laughs> right. And give give this you know give the travel a head start. Right. Uh, Dayton, fantastic job with the first four. No complaints there. Fantastic. It's just no, no like, issues. Yeah, as an administrator, like you, I, I think most players, coaches would rather play two games in two days at one place than two games in three days at two different places. Nothing against Dayton. I would pull the first four out of there and have them send them to the locations that they're playing into. That would be the one thing I would change. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, they do it the way they do it because they sell tickets. In Dayton. Right, yeah. <laughs> Joe, you, and, you, you and, mentioned like the, the size of the conferences expanding and all. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because we're seeing a point here where we're getting into these huge 20-team conferences. Is, is this going to be bad for, for basketball, especially? I know it's a football thing, uh, but where we've got Rutgers and UCLA in the same conference coming up here. And, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, on, on where it's going with having these mega well, conferences? I mean, you know, I'm a basketball purist, so I hate it. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> I think Rutgers should play UCLA when they meet in the Final Four in 76, when it's, you know, <laughs> Sellers against Richard Washington or whatever. Uh, but but I'm never going to win that point. Uh, no one has ever satisfactorily explained to me why – there can't be football only conference. Yeah. Thank you. I love that. Idea. Okay. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I get it. The big 10 network likes to have year round programming. Okay. But like, it could still be the big 10 in football and have mostly overlap, but not complete overlap in basketball or any other sport. Mm-hmm. Like it's still the brand. So, I, I, I mean, good Lord, like there was a brief period and it never came to pass because, you know, all, all the realignment of, of the early 2010s broke it first. But for a single off season, Boise State and San Diego State were in the Big East for football. Yes, I recall. Apparently, Hawaii was not available. <laughs> <laughs> Like so, so, yeah. So like, and 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 now we are at that extreme, and you know, football is just a different animal. So let them go. Yeah. Let You're them abs- go. Make as much money as they want. I don't. I don't begrudge it. I like to watch college football. Yeah. I just don't know why it should screw up my sport. <laughs> right. <laughs> It, you're more right than you know, Joe, because football only conference, it's a, it, it isn't actually like a completely outside the box idea. There's hockey only conferences at the FCS right. level, which I realize isn't the same animal. There's the Pioneer Football League, which is right. a football only conference that makes sense for those institutions that want to play football. But as an all sports conference, the, the Pioneer League would be moronic. So why can't we do the same? at with football at the fps level i i am with you a thousand percent on that basketball and football are both revenue sports that is where the similarities end basketball between its roster size its schedule length the championship it has more in common with rifle than it does with football and i'm not saying that as hyperbolic it does between so let football because it is so unique for so many reasons, roster size, schedule length, resources committed to it, let it be its own thing because it really, in order to make football, what you need to do to make football work makes everything else not work. Just my rant there. It's not my yeah. show. Let's, let's get I, back I mean, to Joe. Certainly the, <laughs> the, the further it goes, you know, the, the world takeover that, that, the, that the, 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 the big sports factories are, you know, hoisting upon it. Look, 
in a way, it's inevitable, right? Because LSU football and, you know, Southeast Louisiana basketball have nothing in common. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Other than in basketball, LSU might pay them a hundred grand to come and lose in November. <laughs> <laughs> and y- you know, I-, I I'm not in the corner of that. I think we're going to have a Division One basketball grouping of only 120 some schools. I I don't think that's going to happen. It's good for to the hear simple you reason that. that yeah. Those 120 are going to want to have other people to play. And they're not only going to want to play each other. Because, you know, I I heard Bob Huggins say, you know, maybe the tournament, maybe it should just be us one tournament of the power conferences. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, then you're going to have to open against Pitt instead of against Robert Mars. So what do you want to do? Right. And in part of me, uh, Joe, uh, do you think Bob Huggins is saying that just a needle, Marshall? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I, yeah. what, 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 what I do, what, what I do see, though, is the big, bigger picture of the evolution of the tournament has almost always been to accommodate more of the power schools, which admittedly invest way more than any of us yes. at the mid-major <laughs> level. So like they have a point, right? They have a point and it's okay that they do. Uh, yeah. But what, I I don't think they have the right to do is evolve to the point of being exclusive because unlike in football, it's been proven time and time and time again, that at least at the higher end of the, of the non-major scale, those teams and schools can compete at the very highest level. Yeah. Uh, because one, it only takes five guys. Yeah. One like more it's thing. Just, that, it's just math. Yeah. To piggyback I'm, I'm off of some... at, I'm checking a text. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, this is big news uh, to our audience here. Does Joe need to leave to pick up his daughter? But while yeah. you're doing that, Joe, to piggyback off of something you just said, uh, I, I don't think – I think one of the things about the basketball tournament that – the establishment needs to realize is how many people watching it. And for David, what can you hold on to that question? Yeah. Okay. If, if, if like we talk and drive, is that like, I'll put the, I don't know if you'll see me, but at least. No, I'm that's fine. no this is, we, we, we would love it. Like, yeah, let us know where you're going. So <laughs> we can, we can drive here and, and even say hello to the person door. you're picking up. Yeah. All right. This, this well, is independence here on the left. Yeah, this is good stuff. This, this is quality. There is nothing on television. This, this is American history here. He that, that is us better than Philadelphia. Joe Lenardi driving, <laughs> talking to a puppet on Hoops HD about college basketball. We just go right to the top. But Joe, what I was going to say is that I think the, the tournament transcends the basketball fan. Uh, people tune into it the way they tune into the Olympics. I don't know anything about gymnastics or swimming. I don't know who the best gymnast from Pakistan is. But if I learned that the gymnast from Pakistan was not allowed to compete, so more gymnasts from bigger countries could, I would not like that. I would caution strongly the college basketball establishment of cutting out the little guys for that reason, because there are people that like the fact that everybody has a path to this event. That was more of a statement than a question. Uh, It's not my show. Let's get back to Joe. (laughs) Well, yeah, it, it, it would still be a competition and a high-level yeah. competition. It just wouldn't be the Olympics. Right, yeah. <laughs> right? It would be, you, you know, like, like Olympic tennis is different from Wimbledon. Yes. And, and, you know, Wimbledon is considered 
to be the greatest tennis tournament. I, I, it's one of the two. I mean, the U.S. Open is going on right now, so I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, if, if, you, if somebody said word association tennis tournament, the first word would be Wimbledon. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know, I I think that it's really important for uh for I, I'm just a big I'm a big inclusion guy. Yes, me too. And I like that. think why why the public will be in. Yeah. of an expanded college football playoff is uh, is is this reason like it's not really a national championship the way it is it's not it's, it's an a, invitational <laughs> exactly exactly like it's still the best you know very likely the very best teams but y- y- you know it's to me it's not a legitimate national championship unless every team that has a realistic chance to be successful gets in or has yeah. a path. In, right. right? Like, yeah. what, like there is a path in basketball. Yeah, there is. At, you... at, at some fundamental level, people understand that. Yeah. yeah, you get to play until somebody beats you. Nothing and, is assumed. Yeah, whether that's the eight-nine game in the SWAC tournament, yeah. or you know UMBC against Virginia, like they keep score, and that's good. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And people, people who you know, people whose first exposure to sports is little league understand that yeah um and and you know to me i'm sure the powers that be in college football fully understand that too they just don't want to be giving oh my gosh this is getting totally wild hold on joey how you doing buddy Former Hawk, Eric Wood, NCAA tournament participant multiple times, pulls up right next to me. You guys All can right, yeah. Like, like, I'm doing a live podcast, Zoom cast or something. <laughs> it's live on tape delay. <laughs> so, I was a, a multi-year starter at St. Joe's. Okay. So, I between us, we've probably combined for about 800 points. Yeah. yeah. That's what I always say about, uh, you know, oh, Hank man. Aaron and I combined for 755 yeah. home runs. Eric has all of those points. Yeah. Eric. And uh, Katie St. Joseph St. Louis, I'm, I'm still friendly with his mom because we St. Louis is now in our league and we go after. Anyhow. Yeah. They're such a great unifier. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and, and, you know, Eric Woods, who's no name in the bigger picture of college basketball, has every much a right to be in the NCAA tournament as, you know, Zion Williams. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yes. So, oh. you know, and, and I'm, I'm happy to die on that hill. Uh, I, I suspect I'll die in real life long before it ever comes <laughs> Well, America I'm with you knew a thousand you were percent. great at college basketball. America had no idea the great driver you were. Yeah, yeah, this is incredible. This is this is good stuff. Like I'm going to get a call from AAA or the state police. And <laughs> yeah. What were you doing? What were you doing? <laughs> right now? I'm about to pass my alma mater. Uh, you know where allegedly I retired three and a half years ago. You, you uh, still do the radio, don't you, Joe? Play by play. Well, you know, like back when schools were on the radio. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> now we're streaming, and I do mostly home games on ESPN Plus. Okay. The, yeah. Holder of the A10, so theoretically, I don't. I'm just, I'm just an alumnus. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh. All good. Yeah. All good. That's right. And, and in a way, it has freed up. You, you know, I used to be, you know, held and tied up with, you know, 30 to 35 dates a year with one school. Right? Yeah. Which was appropriate when my primary paycheck was coming from one school. Yes. But that not being the case anymore. It's good for me to have other dates to get around and do other things, go to other games. So Absolutely. That's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, so how are we going to finish this? I'm turn. I, I'm going to have to turn off and, and shut you guys down. All right. Well, okay. I get. I guess Joe, we we we, we, we since you do have to to shut down here we do want to thank you for joining us it's been, it's been one of the most interesting podcasts i've ever been on <laughs> yeah. Yeah. thank you joe yeah so joe, you're the best yeah all right guys i will see you on the other side david i'll let you know if i come to chicago be safe and uh just looking for a place okay. all right Okay, the daughter well, looks like right. Yeah, right. we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, bye, Joe. Thanks, All right, Joe. Bye, Joe. This, Thanks, is, this was, yeah, I, I thought it would be good, and it was way better than I expected. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, and on that note, I do want to thank Joe Lodardi for having joined us, and on his behalf, car. and on his car, <laughs> and on behalf of. Uh, David, uh, uh, on behalf of there we go. I have those computer problems, guys. <laughs> on behalf of David Dorber down below me, David Green. I, I there, am uh, on the show occasionally, Chad. I'm I, Chad Sherwood. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we will talk to you again probably real soon. And we've got it, we're in early September now, and preseason is coming just a month away. Uh, Thanks for joining us, everybody.